This is a multi-millionaire, and he's going to jail. You know why? He's Luther Campbell, and he heads two live crew, and they're upset in Florida. The cops not only busted the rock group, they busted a uh, record seller for selling their albums. Show them the tape, Brian. Incidentally, this is a rock promoter's dream. These guys have been on everything. I mean, maybe even to Nightline, Dayline, yesterday afternoon, tomorrow morning, Geraldo, and here they are. The, here's, the, here's the moment of their careers on the Donahue Show for the second time. Two live crew. Am I kidding you? Look at this. Time Magazine. Who cares about the SNL crisis when you can have a cover like this? All America is upset. Did you ever see what's going on at a concert today? And are, is it just me, or are you worried about Madonna? <laughs> and what's dirty to you? Show them, Brian. Here's just a piece of uh, two live crew. Is this music obscene? A growing number of officials in Florida and other states are saying yes. Two members of the rap group, two live crew, were arrested this week on obscenity charges following their live concert. A few days earlier, a judge ruled their album nasty as they want to be obscene. And now record dealers who sell it could face arrest. One has already been arrested. What's all the fuss about? Well, nasty as they want to be contains a lot of references to oral sex and male and female genitalia. I know that because it says it right here. Where do you draw the line? And what about the First Amendment? This is the first time that a uh, record has been the center of an obscenity charge with an arrest ordered by a federal judge. As we make our way through this uh, program, you should know that there are other people here, including Alan Jacoby, who's the entertainment lawyer. You work for Luther. I'll Correct. tell you, boy, you got your hands full. Um, you're selling Luther. You're selling records like a... It's good, huh? This publicity. Well, in a sense, it is. You know, I mean, we're, we're selling records to a totally different audience. We're sell, not right now. You know, our record, is, our record is a year old, but with all the publicity, there's a lot of people, curiosity is aroused. Yeah. Boy, I tell you, you know, Elvis looks like from the church choir, doesn't he? <laughs> Remember when Ed Sullivan, you couldn't show his hips? We got that next cut ready? I want to show you. This is... Um, here, here's the uh, rock, rock group, two live rap group, two live crew at work. Here's just a part of what you see on stage. Ahem. Show me which one of the lyrics you want to show first here. Okay, I should also remind you this is a live show. This, this ought to be fun for the next hour. Jello Biafra, you're the former lead singer of the San Francisco punk band The Dead Kennedys. Three years ago, you were charged with distributing harmful matter to minors. The Frankenchrist poster was stuffed inside an album. I've seen the picture. It's a penis in an anal area, and ah, oh, it's dirty, come on. Not everyone interpreted it that way. Jello Biafra, you look like you work for the... IBM here. What happened to you in the last <laughs> uh -uh. Well, when people turn on the TV expecting Sid Vicious or Motley Crue, you why not know play you're Halloween? A, you're a solid citizen. Disguise yeah. myself as Phil Donahue and see what happens. You, might, you never know. Tell me, uh, Jello, seriously, uh, this wasn't funny at the time, and you beat the rap, right? Well, yes and no. It took about a year and a half out of my life. The police broke through a window by my front door and tore my house apart, went through my address book page by page, comparing notes. You know, I felt like I was in uh, the Soviet Union two or three years ago or something. Yeah. Uh, and and you, on you... top of it, it's become harder and harder to get my records into stores in the first place. Free publicity does no good if the stores themselves are afraid of getting attacked by a publicity-hungry prosecutor or 
fundamentalist preacher or something like that. You there do. was even a, a chain called Camelot in Columbus, Ohio. A kid wrote me a letter saying he discovered that every single record with my name on it, even spoken word albums, poetry albums, were all stickered 18 to purchase, regardless of whether or not there's a seven word, there was any of the seven words you can't say on television on it. In other words, I have been blacklisted just like they did to people in the 1950s. And you, want to, you probably want us to know you're not a millionaire as a result of all this publicity. Well, I pay to put my own records out because I want artistic control. I don't want to be like what's happening to the people on the major labels now. A member of a band called Ministry who works for Warner Brothers said that they called him yesterday and said they were slapping tipper stickers, the warning stickers, on all, the, uh, all his records and were charging the band three cents per sticker which is about six times the cost of making one of those stickers okay. to put it on. In other words, profiting or... or profiting. Using censorship to and profiting by it. Yeah. Wendy O. Williams, former lead singer. Well, isn't it about time we talk to a woman about this? And uh, <laughs> aren't you gorgeous, Wendy? And you, uh, you, 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 you do enter the room and you light, you light up the stage. I assume you're still working. I'm on a hiatus right now. <laughs> but you've seen this drama, haven't you? Yes, I have. You were uh, arrested in Cleveland and Milwaukee in 1981. Police said you simulated, says here, Wendy, you simulated a sex act and made obscene motions during your performance. These charges were uh, subsequently dropped. You didn't even go to trial. Somebody in somebody's prosecutor's... That's ridiculous. Tell me. I fought that. I spent it. I thought it took every penny I made for two years to fight that. I mean, and the, it was a ridiculous trumped-up charge. It was... I was brutally... Um, beaten up behind the club. P other people were made. It was a racist attack. The um, police told me they'd seen me on Fridays the night before, and they thought I was an incarnate of the devil. And they were waiting there for me. Mm -hmm. And they attacked me and beat me unconscious, beat other people. They didn't like me because my band was made up of niggers and queers. They said that? That's what they said, and that's what they were, that's what I was being hit with a nightstick for, and it took every penny I made, and I was the same with Jello. I mean, I pay to put out my records. My last record was about the greenhouse effect. I mean, I pay to put out what I want. Yeah. I mean, I'm, they... I'm a little sick of the system, but, um, I'm... Uh, uh, yeah. Wendy, uh... I understand what you mean. I mean, I long for a world where people, you know, I, my own feeling, Mike, is that a lot of this stuff will fall of its own weight. You've got to be talented. You've got to be good. You can't draw a crowd if you don't have that kind of thing. But the more, and the more we abuse people like yourself, uh, I think uh, the more likely it is that it won't go away. So, uh, well, it's uh, what I do you do next? This, this, what, do, what do you do next? What do I do next? What do, what do, what do you do next, Luther? You know, what do you do next? That's, that's what's important. You know, that's where it's at, and that's why shows like this are very important. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mike Muir, lead singer of the controversial band Suicidal Tendency. The group's been informally banned from playing to large crowds in Los Angeles. You cannot play before a crowd larger than 4,000, is that right? Oh, well, we can't play anywhere in L.A., Southern California. Phoenix, because? A lot of places. Um, basically, you need permits and to the play, police. and uh, there's a... It's not attainable, but leave it at that. You had the Secret Service visit you, did you? Yeah. What was the nature of that visit? Um... We have a song called I Shot the Devil, and uh, they didn't appreciate the lyrics, and they came in and they made me fill out like a 30-page thing and do a handwriting analysis thing. I was supposed to, if I go to D.C., I'm supposed to tell them if I'm going there and all kinds of ridiculous uh, things. The, uh, the, uh, the allegation was that, the, uh, that your lyrics suggested uh, the assassination of the president. No, it said in the song it mentioned that it was a... See, one of the great things, when I was in an English class, they taught us about hyperbole, assembly, di metaphors, different kinds of things. And unfortunately, people take what they want out of a situation. Like right now, we have all these people here, and I can say whatever I want. I could be in a suit and tie, but I realize that most people's opinions are already made up. That's why we still have things like racism and things like that, because people's minds are made up. So I'm not going to try to change those people's minds. You're kind of fed but, up with the effort of trying, huh? Yeah, in the, no, I, it's one of those things. You know, you can put a bullet in my head, but you can't kill a word I said, and that's what I believe in. And I fight for what I believe in, and not all wars are fought with fists. Sure. You know, and, you know, the worst evil the world has saw is, you know, crimes defended by the law, and just because something of the law does not mean it's right. Right. And the funny thing is there's a difference between legally and morally and these people may be on the moral side but my definition of moral is a hell of a lot different yes well it sounds to me uh mike like you've thought about this for a long time and i'm very impressed with your thoughtful presentation here i do ask you the following question very gently to the creative artists on our stage 
you do understand a parent's anxiety about sending their kid to a concert where everybody's humping and gr bumping and grinding and high. I mean, they, you know, they, they, we have 16-year-old kids out there. Ah, I'm going to lock my daughter in the basement. You got to know, understand. No, what's the matter? I'm sounding like a reactionary. <laughs> well, Tell me. It, these concerts, for example, Luke's concerts, are for adults. If he does a concert that's not for adults, then in that case, it's a clean show. Yeah, how old do you have to be to get into Luther's concert? Two well, live crew, how old do you have to be? If, if it's an adult show, you have to be 18 years and older. But nobody's checking IDs. Oh, yeah, they are, Phil. they did in Brown County. They checked out the oh, they, yeah. they did it in uh, Canada, uh -huh. the whole state of Canada. We so did you're saying that the responsibility then is uh, to ensure that the audience does not uh, include anyone under 18. Just like a bartender selling liquor. And He's not supposed to sell it to uh -huh. children. And this is a voluntary transaction. Nobody forces you to go. You go, you pay your money. Exactly. This is America. You're, you're an adult. Here, welcome. If you're a child, you can't get in. If you're under 18, you're yeah. not you're not We ask the promoter to tell us what are you getting your concert right. to. If it's kids, we do a kid show. I dig. L Luther, I say I dig because I want to be inside, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Luther uh, Campbell and his group, two live crew, performed for us just two months ago on this program. Let me just show you a piece of their work on this very stage just two months ago. Here's a part of what they do. Here it is, Funk Shop. Funk Shop! Now, how many of y'all ever been to a hotel and y'all had sex in the hotel? Put your hands up. Now, I know a whole lot of y'all out there lying. <laughs> you know. Please come inside and make yourself at home. I want to... Cut my ass on boom, you sexy girl. Behind closed doors, you would drink my milk and nothing more. Now spread your wings open for the flight. Let me fill you up with something milky and white. Cause I want to slay you, rough and painful. You innocent bitch, don't be shameful. Break out the ice cubes and the hot water. This is the second half. I f***ed you until you sleep, you would sleep like a baby And in your dreams, you would say I'm crazy In the funk shop Okay, if you'll all turn your hymnals to page 26, I think we can get on uh... Okay, here we go Bob DeMoss and Jack Thompson Boy, aren't you uh, in the center of America's drama, which even Time chose to feature on its cover. Phil, then why are we over here? Are you, uh, why are you over here? Because this is, uh, we want you closest to the host, because that's, that's the power position. Uh, Bob DeMoss, focus on the family, a youth culture specialist and former musician and DJ. You say two live crew is obscene and not protected by the First Amendment. You want to make your point, Mr. DeMoss? This country is in the business of drawing lines. First Amendment rights, and unfortunately, we need a little crash course here. Fourteen forms of speech are not protected by the First Amendment. You can't slander, libel, false advertise, or create something that is obscene because it affects the public's interest to preserve itself. And unfortunately, some, not all, of what we're hearing here has crossed the line into the realm of obscenity and in, has been ruled such. In, in uh, the opinion of a at least one federal judge in Miami, we should make the point, and I don't know about this particular judge, I don't even know his name, but we have okay, a federal I'm judiciary sorry. that is largely Reagan appointed. This that is does, a, this that is does a not make it, I'm sorry? This is a Carter appointee. He is a Carter appointee, and he found this, uh, he found this obscene. Civilly right. obscene. Civilly obscene. It's not, not different, criminally, it's, different, it's, it's civil, different yeah. burden of proof. Yeah, and the judge Jack said, yeah. Thompson, please. The, the judge said the burden of proof was no problem in this case. There are 600 sexual references. There are descriptions and glorifications of the brutalization of women sexually. I'm an attorney who represents women and children who have been sexually abused. And you can't have your heart broken any more fully than to represent a person like that who has been sexually abused. And you find out very quickly if you do this work, Luther, the causal nexus between what you do and the mental molestation of children and the physical molestation of women. We don't talk about, we don't talk about fact, women, yeah. man. We don't talk about no women. Oh, we really? We don't talk about uh, uh, harassing and sexually brutal, brutally brutalizing about, women about, in my music, man. How about you're this? out of your mind. You, you quote that from another album. From about, somebody else's album who, who have sex with, with, with corpses and all that. Yeah. So about, you, don't, you don't talk about them. 
Hey, we don't do that in my music, man. I'm tired of you saying that, yeah, too. Yeah, how about the gang rape on the album? What gang rape? What quote? You quoted. You read it. You, you listened to it. 